Hi there folks, welcome back to the channel, hope you're all well. Um, this is my 2000 TD5, it's a manual. I bought this as a scrap project and when I bought it, half the chassis was rotten on it. As we all know, TD5s do rot the chassis. So I spent about seven months rebuilding all the chassis on the drive, on the passenger side, sorry, and then I put a whole new quarter in it. Then I converted it all to springs, heavy duty springs, and long travel shocks to give me the um, articulation that I required for off-roading. Winch bumper, rock sliders, um, diff guards, steering guards, tank guards. So quite a bit of time that I've put into this vehicle. And I really want to keep it as a show truck because it's in the body work is in fairly good condition. Okay, there's a few scratches on it, but you expect that for a 20 year old motor. So I really want to keep this in tip top condition and I want to start using it more of a show truck rather than um, going, I don't mind doing a little bit of green laning, but I don't want to trash it. Spend too much time, too much money on it. So today's project or job, shall I say, is to change the fuel pump. I've got a little bit of an issue with um, low low torque. Um, when I touch the throttle, um, I've got hardly any torque. You have to really rev it to, and if you're not careful, you keep stalling it. So I've changed sensors, map sensor, math sensor, things like that. It's made no difference. It's been remapped to stage two, so it's given me a little bit. Top end is not a problem, it's just low torque. So what I'm thinking is that I've lost fuel pump pressure. Obviously I've had the truck now three years. When the, when the fuel pump was changed, I'll never know. So I thought for the case of a price of a pump, I'll change the pump. We all know we have to go through the boots on these to change the pump, which usually you can do within an hour. But I have an issue. My issue is I have built a cabinet in the boot of my car to take all my shooting gear and carry some tools and all my strops and other bits and bobs you need when you go um, out and about with a group. So, first things first, I need to remove this cabinet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this in time lapse to remove the cabinet, and then as soon as I've got the boot clear, I'll come back and then I will I'll show you guys how to change the fuel pump in, in the boot. It's, it's, it's not a hard, hard uh, job, but um, I thought I'd just do a little video, just so some people out there who can't do it, so I thought I'd just show you guys how to change the fuel pump. But first I need to get this out. So um, let's sit through now and I'll meet you guys on the flip side. Right, so now the unit's out, which is all stacked here, and all the stuff that came out of it. We've now got to remove this strip here, and you're supposed to remove the sides. But when I did the fuel pump on my other one, I managed to pull the carpet from underneath just enough to get to the inspection panel, which is round about here somewhere. So, um, got a little bit of rust there, so. Well, we've got that out, we'll give that a clean up and treat that. Stop that rotten through. So anyway, let's get the carpet removed and uh, let's get to the inspection panel. Right, so now we've got to remove this strip here. So we'll just take the screws out of this. On some um, cars, if these have never been out, there's a plastic cover strip over there to cover your screws up but I left mine out for easy access so what you should be able to do is slide that over to one way and pull that out one side and slide it out the other way so that's that one out and then we should be able to pull the carpet from the sides to um, 
expose the hatch. So you don't need a lot, as long as you can get your... Like that. So there's the inspection hatch. Um, I'll just zoom in a little bit. Right, so we've got the hatch off now. It's just held in there by those six screws. You can now see um, this is your pump control wise, power wise, and also it's the sender to fuel gauge sender because that's all built into the pump. And then you've got four wires. You've got, um, I believe it's two return, two flow wires. And the reason being is that it's a two stage pump to build up the pressure. So that's the reason because it goes to the engine then returns back to the pump and then goes back to the engine to, to go to the injectors. So, so what I always do is, these are colour coded. Um, I believe you've got white, black, blue and green. But what I always do is I'll take a photograph on my phone just so I know where the wires or where the pipes go. Easy connection, you just nip. I don't know if you can see the two little tabs on the side there. Just nip the tabs in, pull the pipe out. Um, one thing I do do is I put bags over there and just stop any dirt getting in. But there's quite a bit of um, debris in the top here. Um, for some reason the, the, the tank or the pump secure and ring has started to rust a little bit. So what I'm going to do is once I get that off and um, the pump out, I'm going to give that a bit of a clean up and repaint it. So hopefully um, I take it, well I would imagine that when we go through water, there's still a bit of water sitting on top of the tank, hence why that's rusting so much. So if I give that a bit of treatment now, that should last. So anyway, I'm going to move the tripod into the boot and hopefully get a decent picture of really removing the pump. And then I'll explain as I'm going through it, how I do it. Um, I'm not saying it's the right way, but I hope this just helps somebody. Right, so what I'm going to do, first things first, I'm going to give this a bit of a clean up in here and hoover all the crap out of here because I don't want all that mess and muck going into my fuel tank and end up clogging up my, my new pump and the, my filter. So I'm going to just give that a bit of a clean up and hoover out, get rid of some of the dirt. I'll take off the plug for the switch. Like that, tuck that out of the way. So that gives us a bit better view, so we'll get that hoovered out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wipe these pipes a little bit just so we don't get too much contamination into the right and as you can see on the pipes each one is color coded so we've got a white tab there green tab there blue tab there black tab there so what I will do is I will take a picture with my phone just to give me a bit of reference just in case I have a, a brain fart and um, don't remember where they go so like I said easy with the tabs just pushing the little tabs and just gently push the pipe out and then you may get a little bit of diesel spillage but normally there's not too much so then just bring them out a little bit just gently ease them out because all what holds all what seals them is a little o-ring in the side there so obviously we wouldn't want to i know we're replacing the pump but we don't want to damage our pipes to uh so we have to replace our pipes as well so just gently ease those pipes out and then what i normally do just to keep them clean i normally just put them in a food bag um, just so we don't get no contamination in the pipes because we don't want to get all our dirt and crap into our injectors the trouble is it makes it a little bit difficult to see where your pipes are but if you're delicate you can manage there is a bit of a space above the tank and the and the boot of the car so you can try and push your pipes over there out of the way it just helps a little bit So that's our pipes out of the way. Well, 
nearly out of the way anyway. So then it's a case of um, undoing the collar to release obviously the pump. This is the this is the proper tool that you can get to do this with, which if you can see on top of the tank, the little notches to release. So what that does is just hit on the notches and um, gives you a round. So obviously push down and twist the right way. you can do I've seen people before use a screwdriver just to tap on the outer ring but um, it's up to you at the end of the day I thought for a 10 pound it was worth investing into the spanner this came from I believe I got this from the Land Rover show a couple of years ago so um, yeah for a tenner I think it's worthwhile having so obviously remove your outer ring and then that gives you access to your pump so it's just a case of lifting the pump out, minding your sender unit on the end, making sure you don't get that caught and pull apart. So I'm just going to wipe that. There's a little bit of dirt in the bottom of the tank, but not a great deal. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this ring and give this a bit of a clean up and uh, give it a coat of paint just to stop it rusting any more than what it is and then as soon as that's ready I'll come back right so I've painted the cap for that, I've painted the lid, I've done a couple of little bits in here that were a bit rusty so I've treated those and give them a coat of corrodeless rust resistant paint so get the pump out of the box, the new pump Not forgetting the new gasket. So, new pump. Obviously, just check, make sure your plugs the right one, color coded so you know exactly what's going, which one's going where. Some pumps come where you have to clip them together, but obviously this one's come pre-assembled, so it's ready to go in. We'll take that off of there. So we've got to see it. I'm just. Right, so we've got to see I'm just going to put a little bit of diesel around the ring so the pump slides in a little bit easier so hopefully that'll go a little bit easier now so just slide it in really so if you look on the side of your pump here you have a tab that has to lock into the the outer lock and ring so when that goes down that needs to lock in there to give you a perfect location and if you look on the side of your tank there there's three lines and there should be here an arrow I think that's the arrow there and that's where it lines up to start so get that on there Get our mark on and hopefully it can be a bit of a pain Busy at the moment. Right, 
Right, so that's the pump secured in place. Just want to nip it up and we're ready to put the pipework back in. Right, so now we've fitted our pump. Um, it's now to connect our pipes. Obviously, we're color coded on our pump, so it really shouldn't, we should be okay to fit those. Um, you can change the clips if you want to, but I usually leave the uh, original ones on. As long as they clip into place, it's not usually a problem. So you should just gently push in, you shouldn't need to force them. So that's you, uh, your pump all back on, so it's obviously then your plug, power, and that's basically that done. What I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to change the fuel filter, because obviously if there's any contamination gone from that pump into that filter, we don't want it coming back into the tank. So as a precaution, I'm going to change the, um, the fuel filter, but I will move the camera and show you how to do that. The other thing with these plugs here, keep these, the reason being these are the perfect size to repair your sunroof drain holes. Um, the TD5 have an issue with the drain on your sunroofs, the two drains on the sunroofs, they snap off with vibration. And if you drill them out, these are a perfect fit to, to repair them. So always keep these. Sorry guys, I'll be Right, so now we've changed the filter. There's a pre-prime system on the TD5s, on the diesels. So if you turn your ignition on, so you get your auxiliary lights, like so, and then pump the throttle pedal five times, you'll get the engine management light flash. And what that will do is it will pump the pump to bleed it, and that will run for, I don't know, a minute or so. Um, and then that should be ready to start. Obviously while it's doing that sequence, what we need to do is just check the leaks, make, all our, make sure all our pipes are um, secure and we've got no fluid leaking anywhere. The last thing we want is diesel leaking everywhere. So, um, no, they look good. Like I say, there's only an O-ring in there that seals it, so it's not too bad. And what you'll notice is the pump will keep stopping and stopping the pumper keeps stopping and starting to purge the air out of it so what it's doing it's pumping down to the engine um, I'll try and stick a diagram up of how the fuel system circulates because like I say you've got two flow and returns on a TD5 to build the pressure for the injectors so if I can find a diagram I'll stick it up as well but like I say it's, um, it goes to the engine to warm up then it comes back to the filter circulates through the filter then goes back through the pump and then back down to the engine to the injectors to uh, be ignited into the cylinders it's quite a technical system really but um, it works well so I so said we're now going to leave that to purge so we've got no leaks there so we'll just check the fuel filter and she's nice and dry as well so we've got no leaks so hopefully once that's purged we should be ready to fire her up so uh, let's let that finish and I'll come back. Alright, so now we've primed the system, we've checked we've got no leaks, so now is a case of putting it all back together. I gave this a quick coat of rust resistant paint, mainly on the inside because that's the bit that gets all the harshness from the road and all that. 
So we'll get her back together and uh, hopefully she'll run. Right, so now we've got the carpet in. It's a case of getting all the unit and that back in and all the stuff back in there. So, uh, yeah, let's crack on with that now. Right, there you go, guys. That's how um, you change a fuel pump on the TD5. Hopefully, you don't have this in the way. <laughs> um, to be honest, it wasn't as bad to get out as I thought it was. Um, I thought it was going to take me a long longer to get it out, but I did remember how it came out, so it weren't too bad. So, yeah, obviously a nice easy job if you haven't got a boot full of stuff. And like I said before, I always change the fuel filter because you don't know what um, contamination you've got in your filter and you don't want that going through your new pump. So uh, hopefully that helps. Like I said to you in the video, these bits that come out of the new pump, um, you want to keep hold of these. I have had to repair both of my sunroofs because the drain outlets are only thin plastic and with the vibration they snap. So um, yeah, and these are perfect. If you trim off the tapered piece at the end and cut them just off of the shoulder, they are hollow and they are absolutely perfect for sliding down the center of the, the old one and epoxying in to repair it rather than having to buy a new one. So definitely keep hold of these, they're worth keeping hold of. So anyway, now the only thing to do is um, start it and see if it runs. So uh, we'll see if it runs and then we'll take it for a road test. Shut down, get everything cleaned up, and then we'll take it for a road test, see what happens. 